Good evening, First GU friends and family. It's a new season. It's a new day. Join us on Wednesdays as we connect with Christ and our youth for Bible study story time and other activities as we navigate through life with Christ. Ready, set, let's go. My God is strong. He'll do anything big or small. Nothing is impossible. Good evening, saints of God. When you know Jesus the Christ truly as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, he is bigger than any superhero that we could ever imagine. Jesus as Lord and Savior is super big because he took on the whole world's sin. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That's John 3, verse 16. That is a super big God. And make no mistakes about it, saints, that Jesus the Christ is not only super big, but he's also super strong. For many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord Jesus the Christ delivers him, that's us, out of them all. That's Psalm 34, verse 19. So, saints of God, aren't you glad that Jesus the Christ is super strong? For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. That's 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. 
So today's Bible lessons, we will learn about Christian long suffering. In today's Bible stories, we will learn of men just like us, the three J's, who knew that God is super big and super strong. So let's learn of the life and suffering of Job in today's Bible story. Amen. Job's wife was so bitter and angry by all these terrible tragedies that she told Job to curse God and die. Job told her that she talked like a foolish woman, pointing out that we should not expect God to always give us good things. We must accept the troubles in life as well. Because Job was well known throughout the land, three men who knew Job and professed to be his friends came to visit him and were supposed to comfort him concerning all his tragedy. Job was in so much anguish, pain, and sorrow for the loss of his daughters and his sons and was in such great discomfort from all the sores on his body that he cried and wished that he was never born. After a week, Job's friends began a long discussion with Job in which they accused him of sinning against God, insisting that that is why these things were happening to him. Job knew that he had not sinned against God, yet he knew that God is good, but could not understand why this was happening to him. Soon another young man joined in, and like the others, he joined the discussion but did not support or comfort Job. As the discussion continued, Job painfully declared that they were not only wrong about accusing him of sinning, but they were not the experts on God they pretended to be. They made the mistake of teaching that God allows suffering only to people who sin, and God rewards only people who are good. That is not true. They were representing or describing God the wrong way. They were stating that they always knew why God did things or allowed things to happen the way he does. However, they were wrong. God does allow good, innocent people to suffer. And God also allows bad people to enjoy good things. Job told them that they were not true friends because instead of showing compassion for Job by trying to help and encourage him, they were judging and criticizing him. Through all this long discussion, Job repeatedly stated he believed that he would be resurrected from the dead and would see God someday. And he held on to this faith and did not curse God, nor did he turn from believing in God. However, Job in all his anguish cried out and described what it felt like to be treated this way by God. He wanted a fair audience with God so he could plead his cause to God. God finally spoke to Job out of a whirlwind and by his display of power and his questions to Job regarding creation to which Job could not answer, God helps Job or help Job realize how little he knew, how weak and small and insignificant he was compared to God. God helped Job realize that only God is sovereign and only he has the right to do as he pleases without anyone questioning him. We are his servants and he can do to us as he pleases. Job realized this and told God he was wrong to question God and confessed that he should not have spoken as he did. He told God he was ashamed of himself and that he repented. Then God angrily rebuked Job's friends for speaking incorrectly about him. He told them that Job had spoken correctly of God and that they now must offer up sacrifices for their wrong. God told them he would not accept their prayer, but that they must go to Job and ask him to pray for them, otherwise God would punish them. Then God blessed Job and gave him twice as much as he had before and seven more sons and three more daughters and Job lived to see his great great grandchildren. In this story and other places in the Bible we learn 
that there can be many reasons for suffering. Sometimes it is an experience that God allows us to go through so that we can become stronger and wiser. Other times it can be to show others the benefit of trusting God while we suffer so that they would come to trust God as well. There are times when we can suffer for our stubbornness and foolishness by not taking precautions and refusing to accept truth about things that are happening. For example, if our officials tell us to evacuate or prepare for a terrible storm and we refuse, then we will suffer terrible consequences. But this suffering was our own fault. Some suffering can be the result of sin, such as when a person steals something and has to pay the penalty, or when someone acts irresponsibly by drinking or smoking and gets into an accident or gets sick. However, when we see someone else suffering and we don't really know why they are suffering, we must not be so quick to judge them as sinful because that's the mistake that Job's friends made. The point of this story is that God does not always tell us why he does what he does, but our duty is to trust him no matter what he does. See you next time. Bye-bye. Wow, saints. What a super wonderful God we serve. After all of the great long-suffering Job lived to see his great-great-grandchildren. And that's a long life. So what does long-suffering actually mean? The definition of long-suffering is having or showing patience in spite of troubles mainly caused by other people. This fruit of God's Spirit Long-suffering has many characteristics that even Job displayed. Patience, forbearing, tolerance, uncomplaining, easygoing, indulgent, charitable, accommodating, forgiving, submissive, differential, meek, and mild. Joseph in the Bible found out that our God is super wonderful. For he was betrayed and thrown in a pit, sold as a slave, and even falsely accused and put in prison. Joseph definitely suffered like Job. But what about Jesus? Let's look at a part of Jesus' suffering because of the passion of Christ. Amen.
Thank you for joining us on our journey with Jesus. Tune in next Wednesday as we connect with Christ. Bye-bye. Prosperity. Prosperity.